So this is the last day in class and I've been waiting for this moment for quite a while. Uh, those of you who are still with us, it's quite amazing. You've done really, really well. Uh, you've gotten to this point. I want to take you on a tour to Google where we're building our self-driving car. I mean, out here behind me is the Google building. This is main campus in Mountain View. This is where all your search results come from. And this is where the self-driving car is being built. So here's finally our Google self-driving car. I think you've seen it in the introduction, but I just wanted to remind you how it looks like. It has a spinning laser on the roof that measures ranges to obstacles, obviously more sophisticated than the little grid, kind of red green door example we had in class, but the principle is the same. This takes about a million data points uh, per second and it uses it for map building, SLAM, like Andy told you about SLAM, SLAM, SLAM and also use it for localization to understand where the car is in detail relative to the previous map. There's other stuff here. There's a GPS antenna over here, down here on the wheel. It's a simple sensor that measures how far the wheel is turning. We have our entire computer system. And as you see, there's mostly nothing. There's a very small interface to the car itself, a fuse box, a regular PC. And down here is a navigation unit that contains electronics for the GPS so let's go on a drive. On my display, you can see what the car sees. It uses its rangefinders to track other vehicles using probabilistic filters like the ones we talked about. It also sees static obstacles and classifies them. And the map has been built using the SLAM techniques that we talked about in the last class. And when and where will uh, Kalman and particle filters fit in? Well, Kalman filters are part of the GPS-based localization technique. We also use them in part for tracking other vehicles and for doing sensor fusion between the camera data and the radar data. And the particle filters we used for quite a while for localization. Cross walk ahead. Uh -huh. But then we moved back to grid-based techniques again, using very fast convolution methods for aligning grids to each other. The AI is the brains, it's the core. So all the methods that we talked about, every single one has a purpose in this car. I know there are some differences. For one, the sensor data is much more involved than the little toy examples we made up. Walk ahead. The data is much richer, so it knows about crosswalks, it knows about different functions of road segments. Okay, we are still in manual driving, and this is the moment. Watch the thumb. David, do it. <laughs> yoo -hoo! That's it. So again, there's a car uh, just jumping in front of us. You can feel the braking action. We've started to stay away from them. Now the lane is clear again. Our car accelerates all by itself. Uh, and then we also have uh, in the trunk something called an inertial measurement system. They're composed of things like an accelerometer that can tell us where gravity is, tell us something about like accelerations of the car. There's something called gyros that measure how fast we rotate. And all those are integrated using one big common filter into one big estimate. Uh, that tends to be not good enough. Uh, it tends to be that the GPS base solution alone is often off by something like five, six feet. And five, six feet on a highway means you're halfway over into the next lane. Therefore, we do SLAM for mapping, and you can see maps in the underground over here. These are actual real SLAM maps. And then we use grid-based localization to match the momentary sensor data to those maps. And then we get about 10 centimeter accuracy. And 10 centimeter accuracy is actually sufficient to hold a car in a lane, which is very cool. Even a busy highway like this one is at most 5% empty when it performs well and 95% free. Uh, we're using our highways really inefficiently. If we had bumper to bumper fast traffic, we could easily get two or three, four times as many cars uh, through the highway as we do today. And there's benefits to the people around them, which is the car drives safer, it drives at bigger distances, uh, it stays in the lane better than human drivers, and that makes everybody safer.